What's up gamers? Um, this is going to be the first part of my uh, Resident Evil 7 speedrun tutorial for the new game plus any percent route. Um, but you can use this for new game easy because it's literally the same thing for guest house. Um, right now all I'm doing is running as quickly as I can to get inside the guest house. Um, you just copy where I'm going. Uh, all I'm doing is cutting corners as closely as, it, closely as I can. Um, and yeah. Shortest distance, or the straightest distance is the shortest distance, so keep that in mind. Um, right here, I'm just gonna pause real quick. Right here, when Jack crosses the screen, you'll notice that your movement speed gets slowed down. Um, there is an occurrence that's called um, Jack Boost or Daddy Boost. Lol. Um, I don't know why it occurs or how it occurs. Um, I just know that it happens sometimes, and what happens is. Instead of getting slowed down here, you will actually gain movement speed. So, for a short amount of time. But it's much faster. It, you'll probably save like over a solid second just for getting it. So, I just wanted to, to mention that because if it does happen to you in a run, know that it does happen sometimes. So, don't freak out. Um, and then like, you know, ruin the, the run. You know, you don't want to like get it and then not be able to use it. So, it, it can happen. So, just keep that in mind. And then real quick, when uh, you're in a pause menu and you were, if you pause like while you're walking, right? Before you unpause, make sure to hold W or hold forward and then unpause. So that way you don't lose your momentum. Because if you unpause, like right, if I'm sprinting and I pause and then I unpause and hit W, Ethan will make a full stop before continuing again. So you want to make sure to keep the momentum whenever you pause. Right here, uh, there's like a sweet spot for when to crouch underneath of this. Um, and then to uncrouch, you'll see at the bottom of my screen here, you can play that back. You can see Ethan's shoulders because of the, of how quickly I crouched or uncrouched rather from that crawl space. That is something that, um, it's just like, it's, it's not very hard to do. You'll just like every attempt you get it, you get like a chance to practice it. So don't worry about it if you miss it. Um, coming into the house though is going to be the first pause retry and Usually when you go through the guest house, the game makes you walk slower. Um, so right as you hit this checkpoint here, if you hit pause, you'll see the checkpoint indicator up here. Uh, retry and then spam F because the timer is going to start running um, a bit after the, the loading screen. Um, is Like right before the loading screen is about to finish and you get the option to hit continue, the timer will start. So you want to, once you hit retry, like once you confirm this, you want to be spamming your F, your F input or your other confirm input. I spam both of them and then start moving. So I'm moving a lot faster right now than I should be um, just for hitting pause retry. And whenever you're in the pause menu, the because we use the in-game timer, uh, the in-game timer will stop whenever you're in the pause menu. So uh, that's why you can like kind of do this to make sure that you hit, get the checkpoint as fast as you can rather than say hitting the checkpoint and then pausing like half a second later. So all you have to do is uh, go into this room, hit the chain, turn around and sprint, and then get through this crawl space. Um, if you don't already know this, when you're crouched, hitting sprint and forward will uncrouch you. So you don't have to hit uncrouch and then sprint forward. You can just hit forward, or you can just spam uh, sprint when you're uh, trying to get on through that crawl space. So once you get up, you're just going to... Turn the corner here and then get into the water. Uh, so the pause retry was like, I guess the first like strat. This is the first like trick, I guess. Um, usually when you come to this area, at the very end of it, uh, a corpse will spawn. I believe it's the, the corpse of the guy you play as in the videotape if you found that in the house and played it on the VCR. Uh, whenever he spawns, you think it's scared, he'll jump back. But you can skip it by doing something really easy. All you have to do is once you hit this animation, turn your mouse to the right as far as you can and let go of your mouse and then straight forward and left. And once you hear the bubbles behind you, uh, you can just turn around. So we just skipped the guy spawning completely. Uh, right here I'm going to go over something really quickly uh, that is consistent throughout the entire run. So you're going to pick up the bolt cutters and then you're going to use them on this door here. But the thing I wanted to cover is that when you confirm an item, and the, and like it leads to an animation like this 
the further you are away from the true from like the spacing you, the game wants you in for the animation to start so like right here is about where you want to be or where the animation will actually start the further you are away you will you will get a camera pull animation right see the animation just started but that entire time where the camera was like pulling my pulling me to set up the the spacing for the animation will lose you time so when you come here you want to kind of strafe into it and then confirm it like as as close as you can to the true positioning so and real quick strafing is just um holding w and then a side key while turning inward right yeah so the movement speed I'm, I'm or the speed at which i'm moving right now when i'm just holding w is the same speed if i sprint and look sideways like this you won't lose time so when you're turning corners and stuff it's really good to be able to, to strafe around them to make their turns as clean as you can so pick up the bolt cutters turn and then I strafe into the thing, and then I confirm. Um, your default positioning for the mouse cursor will be at the top left. So when you strafe in and you hit F on here, you just want to hit down right, and then confirm. You will get another chance at the animation thing right here. All you have to do is walk parallel to, I guess perpendicular to the bed, and then walk forward into Mia. So one of the things I like about uh, this game the most is how the inventory works. And while we're forced to sit behind Mia real quick, I'll go over that quickly. And why I think it's so cool. But um, I guess a term I'll use to be consistent throughout the run is downtime. So right now, I'm forced to wait for Mia until I can progress the game. So. No matter what I do right now, I won't lose time, as long as I'm ready to go through the crawl space um, when I can. So right now we're in downtime. During this downtime, you want to delete the email from Mia and then menu your bolt cutters to this slot. You can do whatever you want here, but this I'm just going to go over the way that I do things. Um, so if you're copying me, just do it this way. So. The what's cool about this game is whenever you open your inventory and you close it, the mouse cursor or the hand cursor will stay wherever you leave it. Right? So if I close it and open it, it's still there. This will hold true through retries, through, um, I believe it stays through death, re like respawning after death, I think it stays. And it'll stay through cutscenes, it'll stay through character changes from like when you change from Ethan to Mia. Um, if you exit the game though, if you hit end and then exit to the main menu, it will reset it to the first slot. So keep that in mind. And I don't believe you're allowed to, in the speedrun, exit the game and, and continue the save. Um, pause retries are allowed, but I don't think you're allowed to exit and load it back in. I'm not sure. But anyway, what's cool about this is items um, and menuing is like really key to optimizing this run. So for right now, you want to move the bolt cutters to this position and leave the cursor on the second slot in the middle. And then while I have a little bit more time to talk, uh, I will mention that if you want to learn the route, like if you just want to see like where to go and what order to go, you can watch my current world record video for this. But this video series will be me explaining like every little thing that I do. Um, just for the sake of people who like want to learn the route rather than just like memorize it, you know? But um, I won't be going over in-depth analysis with the skips and the glitches here, but I will make separate videos for them specifically. So whenever like we come up against or we come up to a, a glitch or something that is difficult to do, like the first, the corpse despawn thing in the water is not hard to do at all, so I won't be making a video on that. But I will mention like I'll make a video explaining this in more detail if you can't, if you don't really understand it. But uh, right now, just come into this room and get behind this pillar. You can stay like a little bit to the left, but make sure you turn inward, that way you're not looking at Mia. Once she screams, you can turn away and come up the stairs, but you have to be in that side room and you cannot be looking uh, in Mia's direction for her to progress. Once you come up the stairs, you're going to turn right, and all you have to do is walk just barely into the bathroom, 
You walk out, and you'll hear the knocking on the door. Walking into the bathroom is what triggers this, uh, this next part of the game for Mia to be in the basement. Once she, th she throws you up, um, you just want to hold basically left click or left mouse button throughout this whole section. So I think the game calls it resisting. If you hold space, you will push her face and her arm away and stuff like this. Holding space will lose you time here, so don't, do not hold space. And once she's getting up, hold forward and sprint into her to start this animation quicker. And then continue holding left mouse button. Coming up is going to be the first, it's not really a glitch, it's more like a strat. Um, I call it the, the Mia Quick Rise, the Quick Get Up, I'm not sure what the other runners call it. I didn't figure this out or anything like that, but that's what I call it. I will be making a video on this. Um, it's not too difficult, but just in case anyone like really wants to see. I do have, I did, I do have a copy of Sony Vegas, so maybe I'll try to edit it a little bit to make it more easy to see the visual cue, but at the bottom of my screen right now, I'm not going to hold any of my arrow keys, but I'm going to look at the stain and hold straight down. So I'm looking straight down, and I'm going to look just to the right of center of the stain, and then tap my right key a few times, and I'm looking at the, the my shadow on my uh, left thumb on the floorboard, and look just uh, past her right knee, and she should get up as quick as possible. After she throws you through the wall, pick up the axe, and then run at her. Real quick though, um, if you haven't already set your frame rate to variable, um, do so. You want to have as many fra as much frames as you can get to uh, get multi-hits on her. Um, at higher frame rate, the game gets kind of wonky with uh, hitboxes and hit detection. So you can actually get multiple hits with single swings um, at higher frame rate. So, yeah. So you want to right click swing, Oops, I kind of messed up because I was pausing, but you want to right click swing, you just keep swinging, then you'll get uh, the animation. When she locks up with you there, after you do enough damage, hold spacebar for that section and you'll do this axe cutting animation as quick as possible. So that was actually a slow fight because um, I was just was kind of messing around slash doing it off of a pause, so that's not how I usually do it. But if you want to see it done quickly, you can watch my... Uh, my record video. And for here, after you kill her, you have to wait for this phone call and you have to answer it to progress. But if you stand too close to the phone, the phone will not ring. The phone has an invisible, like kind of like a boundary, you can think of it, that you have to stand outside of for it to ring. Um, so what I do is I, on this little stand on the ground here, walk a little bit forward here, and wait. And once it rings, I sprint into the phone, and well, I strafe into the phone, and then I hold forward to pick it up. And the reason for that is, uh, like the bolt cutter animations, the phones also have animation pulls, so you want to be directly in front of it as possible when you pick up the phone. After the phone call ends, you just want to go right, and you want to pick up the axe. The axe will be wherever Mia's body was when you finish the fight, the axe will be there. So you want to ideally have her die like around this line here on the ground, or like outside in the hallway. Um, it is possible for her to like die like in this corner, like further into the room depending if you get like a really sloppy fight um but if that happens you just have to turn in pick it up and continue the axe range pickup is pretty big so even if like it's a little bit into the room you can like walk in here and like grab it like that but once you come to here there's gonna be another pause or a checkpoint here and it's the same thing you're gonna retry and uh spam your confirm keys and you'll get a movement speed for this area again So these chairs do move, by the way, so you, they won't slow you down. Right here, you're gonna strafe into the... So our our uh, inventory selection is still set here for the bolt cutters, and the reason I have it here is that way I can hold left and strafe in d into this dresser, and then not worry about my uh, keys moving, because when you do when you hold movement keys in the menu, uh, they will move. So if you're holding forward, right, say, like, say I needed the axe here to confirm something, and I open up the inventory while holding W, my cursor will move up. So you want to make sure to let go of either the item or put it in a way that the cursor will not move when you're holding that, that uh, movement key. 
So I'm coming over here like this, and confirm it. Once it opens, I take a little bit of a step to the right, pick up the fuse, and then continue over here. So now my fuse is in my second slot down and to the right, right? So what I'm going to do is when I open the menu for the fuse box, I'm just going to hit right once and then confirm it. So you come into this room again. Boom. That's it. Um, real quick, I will mention that I am playing on the Sero D version of the game. Uh, also known as the censored version of the game that was released in Japan. So this scene is a little bit different because you don't have to watch me cut your arm off and then there's not a screwdriver for your hand. But anyway, that stuff's not important. Well, it is important in the fact that it is shorter. But like, you don't have to do anything differently here. It's just shorter. So the censored version of the game is about 25-ish seconds faster uh, through the lack of animations because there's no decapitation stuff. So when you get like the snake key from the cop, you don't have to reach your hand into his into his body. It's just laying on the table next to him. So if you want to see the differences between the two versions or figure out how to get it, I will link a video into, into the description of uh, how to get Sarah D. But keep in mind that if you already have the Steam version of Resident Evil 7, you will have to buy it again. So if you haven't bought the game yet and you plan on running it, I would suggest just buying Zero D first, but it's up to you. Let's come up here, hit this button, and while the stairs are falling, menu your, your slot here. And then there's going to be a checkpoint up here as well. Once you get it, you can pause. This one's a little bit different. The reason we retry here is because when I pause here, I hit the checkpoint like about, about here. Um, when I load back in, I'm going to load in like maybe here. So you go a little bit forward. Um, load times are affected by the, the strength of your PC. So if you have slow load times, it won't be worth to retry here. So retry and then walk forward. Come into this room. You're just going to run straight to the ladder. So right now I'm going to be performing the Mia one shot. Um, I will make a video on this, but this is just a setup. Uh, taking advantage of the multi hits. Whoops. So I actually got two hits there. Um, the one hit is like the dream. Or not even the dream. It, it's not even too hard to do. But um, as long as you get like, I'd say like a three hit kill, you're probably good when you're just starting out. But ideally you do want to get a one hit. These are pretty sloppy right now. That didn't even, she didn't even die there. Um, it's been a while since I did this because I've been running no guest house runs. But uh, I will make a video on how I do my setup for this. So if I don't get it here, I'm just going to continue. Oh my god. Never mind. I, I, I have to get this. This is also like the last part of the... Uh, the guest house, so this is like the end of the video. Um, Alright, hopefully I can just get it here. This is kind of monkey ass right now. Maybe I'll edit in a successful attempt. Whatever. So, after you do this, like once you start your death animation, you don't have to do anything really. Just make sure that your back isn't against a wall. Otherwise, Jack won't spawn and knock you out. So right now, there's a timer that's going on. We're just waiting for Jack to come take us to the guest house. So I usually just run back and forth to this little area. You don't have to really do anything. Um, so yeah, that's guest house. You hear the little box sound moving, and then boom. Welcome to the family, son. So this is the end of the video. Uh, I will be linking videos on how to do the Mia quick rise get up and then the uh, the Mia one shot so those will be in the description as well as a tutorial video on how to download slash access the Sarah D version of the game um, if there's any other videos I feel like need to be linked here I'll link those too but uh 
yeah, next video will be for the main house part one. See you there, gamers.